All right, so when I heard there was gonna be a Rainbow Six Siege spinoff project, I was initially pretty excited, and once I heard about all the development problems the game was having, my expectations plummeted to basically nothing. But it came out on Game Pass. I figured, what the hell, we'll give it a shot. And weirdly, it is one of the most unique games I've played in a long time. It's a fresh, but somewhat flawed look at what makes Siege so interesting in the first place. Let's chat about it. We're experimenting with doing some shorter don't at me's for topics that don't need the whole rundown, you know? So this is one of those videos, and if you like it, maybe like the video, maybe even leave a comment about what you like about the shorter format and what you don't. Let's get it. So Rainbow Six Extraction is a three-player co-op FPS developed by Ubisoft Montreal, and you can play with up to three players. It puts operators from Siege in the role of a first response team trying to deal with an outbreak of an alien parasite. It is the parasite from Rainbow Six Siege's 2018 outbreak event, but things have changed quite a bit since that time, and the story is now going in a different direction. So what is the game extraction, really? Well, at its heart, it's a stealth-oriented game. Players load into a map with three distinct sections, each having a unique objective. And throughout that map, the alien menace, called the Archeans, or Archies for short, act as the antagonist to be avoided or dispatched. Now, if one of these things sees you and it has enough time, it shrieks and starts calling in all its friends. But the worst part is that any nearby nests that get riled up by this start producing an endless stream of enemies until they're destroyed. Yeah, you can't just turtle up. And the objectives in this game sometimes require stealth like the biopsy objective that asks the players to take down multiple specific enemies with stealth takedowns. Others are inherently loud, but either way, the odds are stacked against the players because you can't actually regain health in this game. You can boost your health temporarily, but if you lose health, it's gone until the end of the mission, and things hurt. The edge that the players need to win are the operator gadgets and pieces of tech that you unlock as you progress through the game. And because you can see the objectives before you actually load in, you can tailor your team to those objectives. Need to stealthily take out some targets? Consider bringing Vigil. Need to defend some bombs from waves of aliens? You know, the Lord's LMG might help out a bit. And many of their abilities have been tailored for this game specifically, like Pulse's heartbeat monitor that can detect nests and its range is substantially longer, pinging everything for your entire team. Obviously, we can't put that in Siege. And like Siege, Intel is everything. If you have enough of it, then Siege's vaunted bullet penetration and environment destructibility let you do all sorts of things to deal with the alien menace, like assess the situation before running in, getting a stealthy takedown, or maybe just getting a cheeky wall. You know, siege stuff. If you die and your body is left behind and captured, your operator is MIA and unavailable for play until you rescue them as an objective in that area in a future mission. So that's the game in a nutshell. A three-player, stealth-focused co-op FPS that takes the great things about Siege and applies them to a whole other genre of shooter. I really love the way that Siege's operators and gadgets were incorporated into the game, and I like that they were tailored specifically for this new, different threat that they're facing. I do feel like it would be good to have a wider variety of objectives more generally, and I'm not sure what the long-term replayability will be, although they seemingly already have a plan for future content in place. It felt like each difficulty level was a clear step up from the previous one, and even though your operators do gain some passive power when they level, it's not enough to carry you. Now, while I enjoyed the core gameplay of this game, it does struggle to shine a bit. It has a ton of seemingly reused assets from Siege, and even though the game isn't full price right now, I think it should have been even cheaper, or there should have just been more content. It's not really a problem at Game Pass prices, but it's important to be honest about what's actually here in the game right now. Also, the story is pretty threadbare, and that's a disappointment given that we have so many fan-favorite characters and this was a great chance to develop them. Contrast that with how Riot Games are using their Runeterra-based games to explore and develop League of Legends characters outside of Summoner's Rift, 
And honestly, this game feels like a big miss on that front. All right, so what do you guys think? Have you tried it? Maybe you're thinking about just picking up a month of Game Pass to give it a shot? Let me know in the comments below. Really excited to hear what Siege fans think about this project that's probably the closest to Siege, but also pretty different. We'll catch you next time. I want to just rock the stash. Just the stash, bro. Aviators. You better f***ing watch it, Josh. Okay. Wow. Holy f***. Holy f***, dude. Stop punching. Stop punching. I'm punching things.